In problem number 18 of section 1.2, we calculate the integral of e to the x times the square root of 16 minus e to the 2x dx. And the first thing to notice is that, uh, integral, or that um, e to the 2x is well, it's the same as e to the x squared. So now this looks a little bit more familiar. Um, it looks like a lot of problems that we've done. Uh, the only problem is that we have you know, e to the x instead of a single variable. But if we make the substitution u equals x, or excuse me, u equals e to the x, and du equals e to the x dx, then we can simplify this and rewrite it in terms of u as uh, square root of 16 minus u squared du. And now it looks like something that we might be able to make a trig substitution with. And let's try um, setting theta equal to sine inverse of our variable over 4, and the reason I choose 4 is because it's the square root of 16. And notice that we can do this because uh, we know that, um, know that u has to be, know that u, u over 4 must be between negative 1 and 1 since this whole um, inside term must, uh, must be greater than 0. So if we take the sine of both sides, we get sine of theta is equal to u over 4, or u is equal to 4 sine theta. That implies that du is equal to 4 cosine theta, d theta. So we can rewrite this as the integral of uh, square root. 16 minus u squared, which is 16 sine squared of theta, times uh, 4 cosine theta d theta. So we bring the 4 to the outside of the integral sign and write cosine of theta d theta. And we can also factor out another square root of 16, or 4, and that leaves us with square root of 1 minus sine squared theta um, under the radical times cosine theta. But uh, by the Pythagorean identity, uh, 1 minus sine squared of theta is cosine squared of theta. So this whole uh, integral just reduces to 16 times cosine of theta times cosine of theta. d theta. And if we look back earlier in the book, there's a proposition that tells us that the um, integral of cosine squared of theta is equal to, here we have 16 times um, so 1 half uh, times uh, sine of theta cosine of theta uh, plus theta. And of course, at a constant. Uh, so this is great if you know we want our answer in terms of theta, but we were originally asked to compute an integral with respect to x, and we changed the variable to u, and then we changed that variable into theta. So now we kind of have to backtrack a little bit and turn our thetas back into x's. So we know that um, sine of theta is equal to u over 4. Um, from this line here. And u is just equal to uh, e to the x. So we have e to the x over 4. And cosine theta, we need to do a little bit more work. But if we draw a right triangle with uh, one angle theta, we know that well, sine of theta is e to the x over 4. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
of e to the x uh, and 4. And we can just apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the other side. We'll call that b for now. This means that b squared plus e to the 2x is equal to 16, which then implies that b is equal to the square root, a uh, positive square root, of 16 minus e to the 2x, uh, where we take the positive square root because um, the length, we're solving for the length of a triangle, length of the side of a triangle, uh, which must be positive. Uh, so now, I can write 16 minus e to the 2x. And now we know that cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is 16 minus e to the 2x over the hypotenuse 4. Now we can go back and uh, change, all, change all our variables into x's. So we have 8 times now the sine of theta, which is e to the x over 4, and times cosine theta. Uh, which is 16 minus e to the 2x over 4, or excuse me, square root of 16 minus e to the 2x, and finally plus theta. But we know that theta is equal to the inverse sine of u over 4, which is the same as the inverse sine of e to the x over 4. And we also want to distribute the one half. So we'll have a coefficient of one half and plus some constant. 